NFL draft coming up a week from tomorrow. We're excited. We're doing a draft show. You, me, Donnie football, mm-hmm. and Jim Hazlitt is going to be part of our panel. Big time. That's awesome. Can't wait. Doug Whaley involved in some capacity. We'll probably talk to him on the phone. Maybe we can rope Mark Caboli into something as well. Or we can rope this guy in. He joins us on the fan hotline right now, presented by Sullivan Super Service, providing trusted plumbing and HVAC service for over 50 years. He is Ray Fittipaldo. Good morning, Ray. Good morning, guys. How are you? <sighs> well, last night sucked, Ray. So we move on to football, where at least in the draft, hope springs eternal. A uh, quick question here to start you off, man. Uh, you've seen all the visitors. Last week you came on and you said, weirdly, the Steelers didn't have a lot of centers come in. And since then, JPJ, yeah. since then, Zach Frazier. Organizationally, do you think they value the center position more or the tackle position more? Well, I mean, that's a difficult question to ask when it comes to the draft. I mean, every every team needs that center. I mean, look at the Steelers' history. You go from Webster to Dawson, you know, to Hardings, and then to Pouncey, basically, with one or two guys in between. It's a very important position. But when you look at it in terms of taking a center at 20, if you take a center at 20, that guy has to be special. Um, you know, we're averaging like one center a year in the first round. Centers do not come off the board early. So right now, this week, like the hot guy is Graham Barton. You know, you look at his relative athletic score, um, you know, for an interior offensive lineman, not a tackle, but for an interior offensive lineman, he is one of the most athletic um, uh, interior linemen to come out in the draft like in the last 35 years. So that projection of him moving from left tackle to center, there are a ton of people in the NFL who thinks he can be an elite player at that position. It's But it's a projection. So, um, you know, the the whole thing about taking a center in the first round, I get it. You need one, but you got to feel that player is special. And I guess we'll find out about a week from now if the Steelers think Graham Barton is special. Do you think they think either of the other two are special? Uh, I mean, if you guys have noticed, JPJ has kind of been sli- sliding down the top 50 list. You see him a lot now, um, like mid-second round in some of these mock drafts. So I, I think some of the steam has kind of gone out of that ship a little bit. I still think he could be in the first-round conversation for some teams, but he doesn't seem to be uh, – you know, he's a hot guy early, did really well early, and it just seems like Barton is maybe catching up to him. You know, I never really saw Frazier, like, as a slam-dunk first-round pick. I suppose it could happen late first round, but you also see him early to mid second round as well. So um, I think if there's going to be a center drafted in the first round this year, whether it's by the Steelers or anyone else, it's going to be Graham Barton, probably mid the first round. Ray, if you're following betting odds and over the last two months, the Steelers were favorites to land two guys over the last two months. And they had the best betting odds to land these guys, which was Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. And I kind of looked at that. I'm like, okay, like if that happens, that's pretty crazy. And it actually did happen. The last time I looked, betting odds for Brandon Ayuk was the, was the Pittsburgh Steelers. Is there any smoke around that as we sit here today? Yeah, I mean, the the draft can do funny funny things to GMs. And I think receivers and agents, more so than any other position in football right now, they really can, can make it difficult on GMs and coaches if their players don't report or if their players really want out of there. So, like, John Lynch kind of shot that down. He said, we're going to keep Ayuk, but... That was a month ago, and now those, you know, those rumors are starting to heat up again. You know, Ayuk unfollows the 49ers on social media. Um, I don't know. Most teams are kind of like in phase one now. I don't know if San Francisco has reported yet, so I don't know what's going on with his attendance there. But, you know, I, I think you could see some draft day trades this year. You know, Cortland Sutton in Denver didn't show up there. He wants a new contract. So I think you're going to see some wheeling and dealing, whether the Steelers – are involved in that. Um, I'm not quite sure. You know, the price on Ayuk was a first-round pick about a month or two ago. But if Ayuk really wants out of there, maybe that price goes down. Maybe the 49ers just say, hey, we kind of want to get rid of this problem, like the Steelers said with with Deontay Johnson. So, listen, if it's for a second-round pick or it's for, you know, like a third-round pick this year and maybe a second-round pick next year, then maybe the Steelers – would consider doing that but you also have to look at 
beyond the season two. He's a free agent. You don't want to just give away a draft pick and rent a player for one year. You kind of want to know that guy's going to be on board for at least a couple of seasons. Ray, do you think it's more likely the Steelers trade up in the draft or back in the draft? Right now, you know, I'll, I'll say up in the draft. I think both Ooh, are possibilities. I thought you'd go the other way. Do tell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think if you look at the offensive lineman that, the, that they've brought in, Troy Fatutanu from Washington, Talese Fuaga uh, from Oregon State, um, you know, those guys are – top 10, top 15-ish types of picks. You don't really see those guys falling to 20 a lot in a lot of these mock drafts. So um, I know they like those two players a lot. You know, um, I think they could probably stand pat and get Mims. But, you know, if there's one of those guys that they really, really think can be a, a, you know, a cornerstone to their offensive line, I could see them pulling that trigger again much in the same way they did last year with Broderick Jones. But... Um, yeah, trade up probably more likely than trade down, but I could also see them standing pat in 20 and getting a good player, whether it's Mims or anyone else, um, you know, they've brought in here in the last couple of weeks. Right. Right. It seems like the Steelers are, are, are okay with their plan B option as we stand here today with center and Nate Herbig. I mean, if something doesn't fall their way, they feel comfortable with Nate Herbig being the center. Could we be seeing that on defense and in the defensive backfield as well with uh, Corey Trice being healthy this year? I know they were high on him last year. Obviously, used a draft pick on him. He's a bigger guy, almost a Joey Porter Jr. size guy, played for Purdue. Um, if, yeah. if they feel he's healthy this year, could he be like a plan B? Hey, we want to use him more just like we wanted to last year. Yeah, so if they don't get a corner early in this draft, um, maybe Trice would be a guy if he really comes on and plays well maybe you can bump Dante Jackson inside the slot and then Trice could be outside but I, I do think Doran we're a ways away from that if you remember last spring he was kind of the darling of OTAs he was playing really well um, you know coaches talking him up he, he like you said he's got that length and he's got that body type that they want in a corner now to shut down those outside passing windows but then he gets injured real, I think it was the first or second day of camp. Mm -hmm. He blows out his knee, and then, you know, he's kind of – I remember late in the season, January, he just started straight line running. So um, not sure mm -hmm. where he's going to be in OTAs this year. Um, hopefully he's ready for camp. But, yeah, if, I think if he comes on and they don't invest a day one or day two pick in a corner, yeah, I, I think he could certainly be in the mix for sure. Raymond, we thank you for your service. We will talk to you next week, the day before the draft. Sounds good, guys. Have a good week. I'll talk to you. You too. Thanks, Ray. Ray Fittipaldo of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. He says it's more likely they trade up. Based on how many needs they have, I think they'd trade back. That's what I would think. And especially with this late fall for JPJ, which I, I'm always... I'm always asking why on stuff like that. Hey, what has what has popped up now that's got him falling? It's probably medical stuff. Interviews. Or he's interviewing poorly, right. yeah. You're invested in a lot of money, a lot of time. Uh, First-round pick on a guy, like the interview process is probably the biggest uh, uh, situation that you, know, you go through as a player, especially if you're a first-round grade. So they want to know that they're getting the right investment and they're putting their money you know, yeah. in the right spot. So maybe it's interviews. I can't see it being anything else. I mean, I, don't, I can't see an injury popping up. I hate to do this to a young man who wants to make his nut, you know. But keep falling, big man. Keep falling. I'd rather Zach Frazier be here. I think the world of him. But keep falling, JPJ. See, that's why I don't think it's injuries, because Zach Frazier's coming off an injury. He so is. So wouldn't you be worried about that? I, wouldn't he fall? I know he's interviewing well. I know Zach Frazier's interviewing well. And they're probably seeing it was a relatively simple break. They fix it up, and that's that. I, it would be a Still. mystery injury with JPJ, right, right. which might even be more of a red flag. If he would fall somewhere into the 40 range, now we're talking about trading up in the second round for him. And it wouldn't be a massive cost to go up, what, 10, 11, 12 picks. That would be ideal for me. You get Mims at 20. And JPJ keeps falling. All of a sudden, you trade up, snag him, and your offensive line with Broderick Jones, with Mims, with JPJ is now set for the foreseeable future. Mwah. Yes, please. I think Frazier's going to go late second. Late second? 
He's getting more first round buzz now. I saw him go in a mock yesterday, 30th. And we know that mock drafts are always right, Doran. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say what I was about to say. I don't want to poke a nerve. Mm-hmm. 